Now this is going to be kind of a catch-all for a bunch of little things that have changed that are uh, wouldn't really warrant its own video. So let's go in here to a, just go grab a cylinder, drag it out of the canvas, go into edit mode, make it poly mesh 3D. And uh, we've mentioned this in the previous videos, but I want to call it out here as well. Uh, so if I go in here to B for the brush menu, I for the insert brush, or any brush that starts with I really, uh, go in here and grab uh, any of these, let's say industrial parts. And then uh, if I just go through here and I just drag out that first one, it's going to drag this out as an IMM brush. If I hit W, that's going to go into move mode. And of course, uh, this is unmasked now by default. So I can go through here and I can change the position of this, but I can also um, swap out what IMM this is. And I can use my arrow keys for that now. So I just click left and right on my arrow keys and I can literally just swap this out. You used to have to go up here and like, go up here and like actually touch these and scroll like this. Now, again, you can just use your arrow keys to very quickly go through and swap those through. Once you're done, you can hit Q to go back into draw mode. And then of course you can draw out another thing, hit W, use your arrow keys, hit Q, and then you're back creating like you were before. Now, if you're using uh, your mouse and ZBrush and you notice, you know, this, this tool menu can get quite long. You have geometry open, subtool open. Sometimes we've been using uh, masking and poly groups and poly paint uh, this session. So you can see this, this um, menu can get very long. Well, you can now use your scroll wheel on your mouse. So you can actually scroll through the menus as opposed to having to click and drag on here. Again, just use your scroll wheel on your mouse. And let's say I wanted to export this. So you go up here to like tool, export, and you can export this as you know, any, any format that you want really. However, previously in ZBrush, if I go all the way down here to our export options, you used to have like group and merged uh, on a per subtool basis. So for instance, in the old days, if I have it, uh, I'm just duplicating these subtools, I had a bunch of different subtools. I wanted to not export my polygroups for whatever reason, I'd have to go through every single subtool and turn that option on. Now it's global. So if I open up my preferences menu and I go down here to import export and I go down here to the export options, you're gonna see all the things that used to be per subtool are now global. So again, if you wanted to turn off your groups, so you could just go in here and turn that off. And then when you export, that'll be for all of your subtools. Now, another thing, I think I brought it up when we were using Stager, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here too, is you're going to notice if I hold down Control Shift, let's go ahead and uh, switch our material out so we can see it a little bit better. So we got Skin Shader here. Uh, if I hold down Control Shift and I uh, click on this, oh, of course, I forgot that I had duplicated this off a million times. I'm going to choose this one here. I'm going to say Delete. Say always OK. Delete, delete, delete. There we go. So I'm gonna hold down control shift and select that screw. You're gonna see it has its own poly group and I have to do control shift A. That's gonna be visibility. Let's close all these menus down. Visibility grow all is control shift A. So that's gonna take all the vert welded or all the verts for that single object here. And you're gonna see we have poly group here. We have poly groups all in here, all different poly groups. And let's say I wanna keep those poly groups cause they're useful. However, I also want to maybe polygroup uh, this section right here. So what I can do is I can now hold down control shift, select rectangle over both of these. And then if I go in here under polygroups, I can do regroup visible. And what that's going to do, it's going to give me new polygroups uh, for this exposed section here. So if I hold down control shift and tap, it's gonna bring all this back. You're gonna see this section here got a new polygroup. However, it did retain my polygroups for this one. Uh, it changed the colors, but if I do control shift A, you're gonna see all these things still have their own polygroups here. So in fact, if I hit, uh, let's do this. Control shift, click a little, you know, one of the polygroups for the screw. Control shift A to grow visible. Control tap in my document to mask the screw. Control shift tap to bring everything else back. Control tap to invert that mask. Hit W. Uh, let's go ahead and say um, reset transformations. And then that's the little back arrow. And then this little teardrop is to uh, center it on unmasked. Then if I hold down control and drag this out and then let go of control and just keep dragging, it's gonna make more and more copies. So now I have a bunch of different screws here that all have polygroups. And in fact, these polygroups are the same. So if I control to click uh, this one, it's gonna select the polygroup for all of these. So let's say one more time, I'm gonna grab control shift, grab visibility for all these. And it's like, I want to regroup my polygroups and I want this to get a new polygroup and all these to maintain their polygroups. Again, polygroups, regroup visible. So now this has a new polygroup, but all of these still have uh, the different colors. Like I said, it'll change the color of these polygroups, but uh, it will still maintain the same polygroup across all of these. Now, one more example, if I did want to like, you know, 
let's control shift click these let's go in here to polygroups auto groups and that's going to give all of these non-vert welded pieces a separate polygroup here just for demonstration purposes just hit auto groups so now all of these shells oops have different polygroups now same deal control shift let's go ahead and grab all of these we're going to say regroup visible and it's going to say oh these already had polygroups so i'm just going to give you uh, a new polygroup for those. So this got a new uh, color, but still the same polygroup. And then these still maintain the fact that they are separate polygroups. However, all these original pieces in here are all the same polygroup. So it's going to remember the polygroup assignments and then just regroup whatever you have visible on your screen.